let's wrap up today with our last discipline that's very important, uh, photography. So photography, how many of you guys use photographs out here? Right. What's new in photography? So set the bit a little bit. Since its inception, photography has been one of the most accessible forms of human expression and art. And it plays an essential role in all of the disciplines in, across the creative professional space. Photoshop and Lightroom have transformed photography for millions of pros and enthusiasts. Both of these tools have been near and dear to my heart since I first served as a Photoshop product manager. Yes, we all have to start somewhere. So. Um, and then later kicked off the Lightroom project. So delighted to be involved with both of those projects. We're inspired every day by the beautiful images that all you create with your vision, with your cameras, and with our photography tools. And it's been one of my long-term personal passions to make this technology available to as many aspiring photographers as possible. So let's get into a couple of really cool demos. What I'd like to do now is invite Brian O'Neill Hughes to the stage. You know, to follow one Jason, it takes two Brian's, and so another Brian up here to, to, to walk us through all of our innovation in photography. Brian. Thank you. What? When they ask you as a presenter, who would you like to follow? No one ever says Jason Levine, <laughs> ever. Or Brian, I've never felt shorter or less charismatic. Uh, <laughs> but that's all right. I've got some really great stuff to show you guys for photographers. I think we're all photographers. Uh, so let's, let's take a look at what's new in Lightroom Mobile. Lightroom Mobile is a, a free companion application for Lightroom CC on the desktop. And as such, it can communicate with the desktop. Your files are synced, you can flag, you can sort them. But it's also a very powerful image editor. So I'm on the iPad Pro here, uh, and it, it looks amazing here. I could do things like straighten and crop this image, but even that simple operation is unique in Lightroom Mobile because it's entirely non-destructive. Everything I do here can be undone later. Let's go into Adjust, where we've got all sorts of familiar operations from the desktop. We've also got some really powerful editing tools as well. So something like Tone Curve. You know, normally when you think of Tone Curve, you think of wrangling a diagonal line to yield a proper exposure, but it's much friendlier here. I could just take my highlights and bump those up, pull down the lights, pull up the dark areas, and darken the shadows, and I've introduced a lot more punch and a better tonal range into this image. Now, if I want to come down to the individual colors, you see that I can bump up the individual values there, the saturation of those. I could even adjust the luminance of them. So I could, I could adjust the color luminance of each one of those tones. Now, as I convert this to black and white, again, it's really important to note, everything that I do here, just like in Lightroom, is entirely non-destructive. I could revert back to color later. All right, so let's look at a little trickier example. Uh, it's an image I shot out of a plane, as most of us do. And if I come in here and I want to adjust this, my usual tools aren't going to help very much, right? So highlight recovery, it might give me some more detail on the clouds. Something like clarity, which is usually pretty magical, it's just going to change it. It doesn't necessarily improve it. And what I want is dehaze that I have in Lightroom CC on the desktop. I don't know if you guys have used that, but it's awesome. Well, I've got that in Lightroom Mobile as of today. And so I come in here, I just drag one slider over, and I can cut right through the clouds there. Thank you. OK, thanks. As I mentioned, everything syncs. Because of Creative Sync, this all syncs over to the desktop. So if we come over to the desktop here, and we look at those images, we'll see that our black and white image is, in fact, black and white. And if we were to come in here and go to the Develop module and crop that, we can see that we can crop or uncrop it. We could revert it back to color. Anything that we do is communicated back and forth between devices. Uh, and of course, the changes that I just made now would be available back in Lightroom Mobile. But they're also available in other applications, applications like Photoshop Mix. Now, Photoshop Mix has been completely re-engineered from the ground up. And the idea here is to give you more precision, more power, and more creative control. So here's a couple pictures of my kids. And you'll notice that there are multiple exposures. Uh, there's a rare picture of Jason Levine holding still. We used a, <laughs> <used> a high-speed camera. <laughs> For this, the one that stops bullets and go through the apple. Uh, he looks great. Um, and this is the sort of effect you see in the credits for True Detective and things like that. It's a tricky effect even on the desktop. It's really easy in this new version of Mix. 
So let me show you how it works. Here's an image of my wife that I've already cut out using Mix. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop another image in here. So I'm just going to come in here, and we'll grab this image of these trains. And I'm going to rotate that, scale it. I could move that around, put it wherever I like. And then I'm going to drag the image of her onto that and copy the mask on there. So now it's trimmed to her. But what I need now is blend modes. And in the past, I haven't had those. A lot of people wanted these in Mix. Well, we've got nine of them in here. It's no problem whatsoever. I could do an overlay blend mode. And now I'm really getting somewhere. Well, what I want to do is I want to bring in some texture. Now, if you've used Mix before, you know that it only has support for two layers. Well, there's now support for much more than just two layers. Let's come in here and drop in another image, another texture. And we'll use a different blend mode for that. Let's use Multiply. And that looks great. Within just a few seconds, I've created that sort of look that on the desktop would take you quite a while. Now, there are some other workflows that you can use that for. Let me show you one of my favorites here. Not Jason. Um, let's open this here. And this is sort of a classic example of what you'd use Mix for, uh, two wildly different images combined together. Now, the first thing that you notice is that these images, they don't match. And, and the biggest tell is the color temperature. Well, in the past, you didn't have temperature in Mix. But in this new version, I'm just going to tap on the foreground. And I have about twice as many tonal adjustments as I did before. So I can come in here, and I can warm that up just like so. And it looks a lot better. But in order to harmonize that, those two images there, I want to add some texture. So I'm going to drop a third layer in. I'm just going to come right in here. And we'll grab a textured image. This could really be just about anything. And we'll come into our blend modes. And for this one, we'll use overlay. right? That's the effect I was after. I'm going to reduce the opacity a little. And now let's talk about some of our options with that file. I've got this, this great looking file. I can save it back to Lightroom. I could push it to all different social networks. But I could also send it over to Photoshop. And as we look at it in Photoshop, I already sent an image over before. I want you to really think about what we're doing here. Because this isn't just passing a file over to Photoshop. This is translating. This is Creative Sync translating this file into a language that Photoshop understands. This is the PSD file format. It's the, been the creative standard for over 25 years now. And as such, it comes in with my texture intact. You can see that the blend mode and the opacity are there. The mask is there. It's a full resolution file. The team has done an incredible job here because even those tonal adjustments that I made to the foreground, those come in as a smart object, as a smart filter. So I have all the power of Camera Raw here. I can do all the things that I would do there. So really, really nice integration. OK, so we've talked about what we're doing uh, with Lightroom. We've talked about what we're doing with Mix. But if you talk to photographers about how they use Photoshop, they're likely to tell you one of a couple things, that they use it for creative image editing. They use it for layering and masking and the sort of things I just showed you in Mix, which show that you can now do those things anywhere. But the other workflow is retouching. right? And they're constantly going from Lightroom to Photoshop up until today. Well, as of today, I'm thrilled to announce a brand new application called Photoshop Fix. And Photoshop Fix is all about retouching. We've brought powerful retouching tools from Photoshop into the mobile device. Now, the thing to know here is that in doing this, we didn't just copy tools in. We completely reimagined how this works. And that starts with being able to open large resolution files. So this particular file, uh, so I shot with the Fuji X-T10, 16 megapixels, no problem whatsoever. We've tested more than double that resolution. It's no problem. These are very large files, and we've got some great tools here. So I could come in here. I could spot heal this using the healing brush. I could come in. I could touch this image up, remove some distracting elements. You notice that I've got a patch tool, a clone stamp tool. But if we come in here to adjust the tonality of the image, um, we can do some other things as well. So the first thing you might notice is we're not using scary words like dodge and burn. We're just saying, let's lighten this, right? Or let's come over here and lighten this. And maybe I want to come over to the brake rotor here. Big fancy brake rotor. I'm a car guy, obviously. Lighten that. And then maybe you want to darken this even out the tones a bit. I'm just dragging my finger over the hood, over the door jam, over the windshield. And let's look at the overlay. So everything you see in green is where I lightened it. Everything you see in red is where I darkened it. I'll turn off that overlay, and we'll look at that before and after. You can see 
Really nice job there. Let's do one more thing to this image. Um, let's add a vignette. And if you've used mobile apps for imaging, they all have vignettes. Uh, what's different here is that everything that we're doing in Fix is layers under the hood. Um, so that's entirely non-destructive. And so I could move this around. I could, I could put it off center. I could change the shape of it. I could change the color. I've got that sort of precision and fidelity that you would expect of an application wearing the Photoshop name. OK, now, as before, I have lots of things I can do with this. I'm going to send it over to Photoshop, and we'll take a quick look at this file in Photoshop. OK, and you can see the full resolution file, which I already sent over before. Uh, I've got my vignette. I did some other operations here, my selective tonal edits. Everything is preserved. Everything is layer-based. It's leading me down the correct path. So even if you're brand new to retouching, when you come into Photoshop, you know what to do. All right, well, there is, you guys like it? Well, well if you like that, there is, a, there is some other stuff I want to show you here. And for this next part, I, I found a really problematic file. Um, I, I found a file that, that needs a lot of work because people retouch pictures of people a lot. And so I, I found a picture of me. Um, and I couldn't think of anything that, that needs more work than this one. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys are comfortable. This, this might take a moment. Um, so we're going to come in here. And I'm going to use these same tools in a slightly different way. Um, and it's important to remember that any of our tools in here, the healing brush and whatnot, these can work as brush-based operations, or they can work like in Photoshop, where I'm just dabbing my finger on the image, OK? Just dragging it over the image. And as you can see, we could, we could, spend, we could spend a long time on this file <laughs> if we wanted to. <laughs> We're not going to do that. We're going to move on here, and, and I'll show you a couple of other things in here. Now, you've got healing in Photoshop, but one thing that you don't have explicitly is skin smoothing. OK, now, with skin smoothing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on an overlay, so you're going to see where my finger is on this file. And I'm just going to drag my finger over my forehead, and you see the green overlay there, but I'm purposely going to drag it over my eye and over my eyebrow. Now, when I turn off the overlay, we see that we've smoothed the skin. So if I toggle that, you'll see we've done a nice job smoothing the skin, but Fix knows the difference between my skin and the detail in my eye or eyebrow. So really, really nice implementation there. OK, now let's, let's work on my teeth. Um, I, would love, I would love to say that you know, this is just the lighting, uh, but the truth is uh, it's, it's much more likely that I've been dipping into Jason Levine's coffee supply, and I have. Uh, I've, been, I've been going crazy on the coffee, and that's why my teeth are discolored here. Um, I don't know how Jason keeps his so white. <laughs> Come through here, I'm just going to scrub along on each one of these. And if I were to wander off, I could come back and I could restore any of those. If I wanted to apply this effect even stronger, I'll just come through here and do that. If you guys think this is surreal, can you imagine scrubbing your own teeth on an enormous screen like that? It's, <laughs> it's, it's very strange, very strange. I'll tell you, if I never see this guy again, it'll, uh, it'll be too soon. Uh, let's, let's do one more thing to me. Uh, let's change the color of my eyes. Again, the lighting, of course, ruined them. They're, they're normally a much more vibrant blue. Uh, much more like Paul Newman, if anyone's ever seen him, uh, they're a lot, a lot more like that. Right there. That's, that's how they actually look. All right. So let's apply that. And we'll move back here. And as I mentioned, this is, we're, using, we're using layers under the hood here. Um, so it's this nice non-destructive process with multiple undo. So I can come back to where we started, uh, and we can step through it really quickly. So we removed blemishes, we smoothed the skin, we whitened my teeth, and we made my eyes look the way they really do look. OK? All right, so one more thing I want to show you guys. Um, and I'm going to take this iPad Pro uh, out here. This is, this is my favorite part. Um, it's, it's kind of habit forming, I'm gonna, I'm gonna warn you. And it's not just because I'm picking on one of my very best friends, although I am. Um, this is my good friend Steve. And let's go ahead and rotate this. You'll notice there's a dynamic interface in here that rotates for me. And I wanna use Steve here, this is a Photoshop's program manager, to show you how Liquify works. Now, 
If you've ever used Liquify, uh, you know that you can do some pretty powerful things with it. You can do direct manipulation of an image. And there isn't a more powerful way to interact directly with an image than Liquify. But when it comes to his face, right, um, what you want is the ability to automatically segment it. You don't want to work on each piece individually. So I cannot think of a better example of Photoshop magic than what I'm about to show you. I'm just going to touch this face button. And we've dropped pins on Steve's eyes, nose, cheeks, mouth. And all I need to do is touch on Steve's eye. And I can change the size. Tilt Steve's eyes. Somewhere Steve is, is blushing right now. He's, I'm sure he's probably watching this. I hope so. I can adjust the width of Steve's nose. If I wanted to warp Steve's nose, I'm just going to take my finger and drag that. And that's all constrained to that particular segment. We could move down to Steve's mouth here. We could adjust the width of that. We could adjust his expression. <laughs> Smile, Steve. We could come down to Steve's uh, jawline, to uh, his chin. And if I've taken it too far at any point, which I obviously have, we can come in here and we can reconstruct that. Steve looked just fine the way he was. Um, really, really powerful tool. Really fun to use. Um, Thank you. you. I think you guys, I think you guys are going to love Fix. Um, I should mention that the updates to Lightroom Mobile, everything that we did to completely re-architect Photoshop Mix, and the brand new Photoshop Fix, I showed all those to you on the iPad Pro. They're also all available today on the iPhone with complete feature parity. So everything I just did in that demo, you could do with the device that you've got in your pocket, and it's coming soon to Android as well. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Brian. What are friends for, huh? <laughs> what an amazing release. As you can see, our photography tools no long, are no longer tied to the desktop. They are a complete connected photography system across mobile, web, and desktop. And with Photoshop Fix and Photoshop Mix, we're leveraging the core Photoshop engine to bring compositing and retouching technology to mobile and to make it available to a much broader set of users via an intuitive set of mobile apps. And you get all this in the Creative Cloud Photography Plan. This is the industry-leading set of tools, and we want to make sure that it's the world's best technology is available to everyone. We are very passionate at Adobe, I think you can tell from today, about helping you guys realize your creative vision. And while great photography begins with you, having a nice camera wouldn't hurt, no? So we want to help you with that part. We have partnered with Fujifilm, and we're excited to announce that everyone attending Max in person today will receive a brand new Fujifilm X-T10 camera. Does anyone have a problem with that? <laughs> so, this is an awesome camera. I've been playing with it. All the latest technology, a fast and versatile 18 to 55 millimeter lens, f2.8, and that classic camera feel. So our goal here with this is to help you unleash your inner Henri Cartier-Bresson, if you know that. He was a famous street photographer, okay? So you're going to be able to pick up this camera this afternoon in the community pavilion, so don't miss the opportunity. Don't wander off, okay? What a day. I still can't get over all the awesome technology that we showed you, and, and I particularly can't get over Jason's singing. Uh, but I'll work on that. Uh, our teams have been working harder than ever, and I think you see that we covered a lot of ground today. There's just a ton of innovation that we're bringing to Creative Cloud. Let's do a really quick recap. First, Scott showed you Creative Sync and how it powers connections between desktop and mobile apps and the assets that you use every day. Then we showed you a great set of new desktop innovations across graphic and web design, user experience, and video, including touch support, su touch support across all of your most popular Windows apps from Adobe. We updated the Creative Cloud Photography Plan with some awesome new additions, including the new Photoshop Fix, 
that creates a connected photography system for desktop, mobile, and web. And across all of this, we showed you how you can easily access Adobe Stock directly in the creative apps to kickstart or augment your design process. Everything that we shared is part of Creative Cloud and will be available in the coming weeks beginning today. So you know, start to download that now. So go sign up for Creative Cloud if you haven't already. My instinct is a lot of you already have, and you'll automatically have, have access to all these latest innovations as we roll them out. So whether you're a freelancer, part of a creative team, part of an enterprise or education or government institution, this release is really all about giving you the creative freedom you need to do your best work, to be inspired anywhere at any time. I'd like to give my thanks to the Adobe, <clears throat> excuse me, to the Adobe teams and to the Mac staff who made this possible today. So let's give them a round of applause. And finally, I'd like to thank all of you here and online. Thank you all for doing the beautiful things you do, for making the beautiful things you make with Creative Cloud. You inspire all of us at Adobe with your creativity. You make a huge impact on the world around us. Keep doing it. <laughs> Have a great afternoon, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Thank you.